Well, let's head on in and check the Feathered Friends and Flight Show. I seen a show there years ago, it was a different one. And I always liked it, and I bet I'm gonna like this one too. Let's get to it. This is line, not a very huge queue line. All these little decorations things. This, where we are, this is located in the Asia section of um, Animal Kingdom. I think it's cool when they have these like little, look at that. I wonder how many people actually look at these things, because it really adds to it. It really adds to the atmosphere, I think it's pretty cool. Look, even though this is a bird show, guys, there's some one of the birds and uh, distant family members right there. There's a little lizard right there, probably a brown and all. Guys, I felt the wind in my head from them. It was a rosette spoon bill that one was. Well, hello everyone. Good afternoon. Hey everybody. Welcome to Feather Friends on Flight. Come check out all these cool birds around here. My name's Scott. And I'm Ray. And birds have been the story here ever since the park's been opened, dating back to 1998. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? Yeah, absolutely. This is our favorite part of every day when we get to give you all a closer look, kind of like this, of all of the birds that we were yeah, this is Houston. She's a southern ground hornbill. She flies pretty well, which is pretty misleading that she's called a ground hornbill. But that keeps her safe from other predators that are out there. Yeah, and that's not the only cool adaptation she has. Check out this beak. She'll use it like a pair of chopsticks to eat just about anything, including venomous snakes. So picture this. They find one slithering through the grass. They'll pick it up, shake it around, slurp it back like spaghetti. It's horrifying. <laughs> and here she goes at top speed. 
<laughs> too funny. Well, main thing is, there are a lot of different types of hornbills out there in the world. They come in different shapes and sizes, right? And that was one of the largest species. Now, this is a smaller species that you'd find in the forest of Africa. And her name's Daisy. She's a trumpeter hornbill. And she's going to be more agile to weave in and around the trees in the forest where she's found. Yeah, we've actually come up with a cool way that we can show off just how agile a flyer Daisy is. But we're going to need your help and a little bit of imagination. I need two volunteers from the same party that want to help us out and pretend to be trees. How about you two in the back with the sunglasses? You have a hat on? Stand up! Perfect! And you're just going to work together to create a nice hoop with your arms. Oh, oh it looks great! Perfect! Okay, you are our taller trees in the forest of Africa. But all of you are part of our forest, so maybe oh. if your camera's on. All right, I love this concept. We have Daisy. We have a whole bunch of trees out here, like Grace said. Our two taller trees are standing there in the back. Some of you folks are going to get a close view. And look at that! Now the most of our trees, you guys did awesome. Thank you. Fun fact, they also don't just fly like that to get food. They will actually they do fly like that to get food. They actually yeah. avoid trees that way and they catch flying insects that way. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it's one of the coolest things they do. In fact, I kind of want to show it off. Okay, but we don't have flying insects. No, that'd be weird. But I do have something that might be just as good. I got this. Who knows what it is? Shout it out. A rocket launcher. You got it. Yeah, but I already lost all the rockets that came with it. So I just started putting fruit in here. Right now there's a grape, so it's a grape launcher. We're gonna launch some fruit in space. Okay. Okay, I need one volunteer rocketeer. How about you in the gray shirt? Come on up, let's give a round of applause for our rocketeer. Okay. Hi there, what's your name? Nice to meet you, William. Okay, you're just gonna stand right here. We're gonna count you down from three. When we get to one, I need you to stomp as hard as you can on that yellow launch pad. Can you do that? Okay, you ready, William? Are you ready, Scott? Oh, yeah. Are you ready, Daisy? Oh. All right, let's count them down together. Three, Three two, two, one. Whoa. Woo. She got it. Awesome job, William. Can I have a high five? Another round of applause for our rocketeer. He did amazing. <laughs> that thing actually works. I am so impressed. What do you think, five-star review on Amazon? Yeah, at least, I imagine. That's pretty cool. All right, Daisy, you did a great job. More treats are waiting for you back home. Daisy the Trumpeter Hornbill. Okay, so the neat thing is not all birds are going to use physical adaptation. Some might use things like their intelligence to help them out, and there's some pretty smart birds out there, but if you think of the smartest, it's the Corvid family, which includes birds like this. This is Walker. He's an African pied crow. Yeah, and we've actually come up with a cool way we can show off just how intelligent Walker is. We're going to need your help again, though. So I need another volunteer, this time an adult with a dollar bill. I got one. The hands go down fast when we ask for money. Um, ma'am, in the football hat, you have money left? Yes, I do. Okay, cool. And if you're digging, fives and tens, they work just as good. <laughs> Whenever you've got that dollar bill ready to go, you can just stand up, put it in your hand, out to your side, like a nice, strong perch. See, the neat thing is, we taught this bird to identify people not by what they look like, but by what objects they're holding. So we have that dollar bill right out there. What do we see when we, what do we do when we find money, buddy? He's gonna turn around backwards and wipe his beak on my hand. That's Call nice. Part of the process. All right, so he finds the, finds the money. He's gonna fly out. He's gonna take it from you. So where's it go? Where's it go? Yeah, there we go. Right in the pocket. Nice job. Great job, Walker. And ma'am, have a magical day. Nice. All right, so uh, I think he could use a little more work on the pocket. So anybody over here wanna try for a 20? <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're going to return your money, ma'am. Ma'am, you can stand back up, hand flat out to the side. When he drops the dollar bill off in your hand, wrap your fingertips around it so it doesn't blow away. All right, here he goes. Wrap your fingertips around him. Round of applause for our volunteer. That's fun. really something you don't see every day. Yeah, what's that? Money back at a theme park. <laughs> True. All right, Walker. Great job, buddy. Okay. So, uh, neat thing is, there are some birds that really thrive by relying more on their speed too, right? I mean, some birds are faster than others, but if you think about hawks, they're pretty fast. You want to see a hawk fly? Yeah. All right, get your cameras out and ready to go. You're going to get some great photos of this bird in flight. Now, there are some pretty cool things we can talk about with hawks, right? So, fun facts. Um, <laughs> fact number one, that's not a hawk. No. But he's coming. Is the hawk on his way? Yep. <laughs> Well, chickens and hawks are like not friends. They don't hang out. The predator prey thing, we prefer to leave that to Nat Geo. Yeah. So I'm gonna get these ladies home. I'll be right back. Ladies! 
Okay, uh, well, they're gonna be fine with her, so let's meet a hawk. We're gonna meet Mason today, and Mason is a Harris hawk, and you find these birds in the desert southwest parts of the United States. So in just a moment, hopefully, we'll be joined by a Harris hawk. There he goes now, pretty cool bird, right? Now, as I mentioned, they're found in the parts of like New Mexico, Texas, Arizona, but why I love bringing out Harris hawks is because they're, they're so unique, right? Heads up, coming your way. All right, so most birds of prey are solitary animals, right? But Harris hawks figured out that they live and hunt in family groups. They can take down food much larger than they can take down their own, up to the size of a jackrabbit, which is pretty handy to say the least. All right, heads up, coming your way. Now, we did mention speed, so right now he's not going as fast as he can go, because if he wanted to do that, he would go up into the sky. He would dive on down, and at full speed, this bird can reach speeds well over 100 miles an hour, if you can believe that. So incredible when they need to be to survive out there in that harsh desert environment. But we want to get all of our friends involved here on the theater, so we're going to get you guys on that side of the house. Heads up, here he comes! Nice job, and if you try to duck to get out of his way, he just flies lower. I forgot to mention that. <laughs> Alright, last flight in. We're going to see how close he gets to all of you, okay? On this very front row, we're going to get a nice close look at Mason. Wow! Nice job, Mason. You were on fire today, buddy. Cute little tail back to say goodbye. What do you think? Yeah, there we go. Nice. Alright, see you later. Mason the hair is off. Okay, guys. Don't worry. The chickens, they're full. They're in their coop. The hawk can fly. Right. Yeah, this little hawk. You almost caught the tail end. Thank you. <laughs> well, did you at least tell them fun facts about hawks? <laughs> well, I mean, I didn't get a chance to mention everything, but my favorite fact, this is cool, one hawk that size can be close to a thousand mice in a single year. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of nuts. Remember that rat problem we had here a few years back? We weren't supposed to talk about the rats. Oh. I mean, it was online. Everyone heard about it, right? Yeah. Rat problem. About it. Okay, so yeah, it was it was a thing, right? But there was more than one, just so you know. There were like hundreds of rats everywhere, and uh, yeah. people get really squishy. Yeah, that's what Scott sounded like. That's sure. The rats. Ah. I get kind of nervous. But the neat thing was, we brought the hawks in, and you know what happens when hawks eat rats? What happens? Right the rats disappear. That's the nice way to put it. Yeah, we're Disney World. So. They disappear. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's not kidding. There were several hundred rats here. We were like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You were like, right there. That's exactly what Scott's out there. Mm -hmm. That's true. They were all over the place, but the good news is the rat problem is behind us now. Take that, Jungle Cruise. <laughs> okay, so when I was backstage, I was talking to Ellen and we had a fun idea. Okay. Um, does anyone here like ravens? Yeah, you do? Okay, because I've been working on a cool new behavior with one of our ravens named Luca, okay. and I was thinking maybe we could do an impromptu training session to show off some of our cool ravens, and you can talk about it. What do you think? You guys want to see a behind the scenes peek? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Okay, so we're going to meet Luca today, like she said. Luca's a colored raven, and here he is now, and uh, I'll just talk you through what Ray's doing. She gave him a treat. Let's start there. That treat is important. It lets Luca know whatever he did right before he got that treat. If he does it again, he's going to get another treat, and that's kind of how we communicate with all the birds while they're out here, right? It lets them know what to do. So, for instance, when he flew over to Ray's hand, she gave him a treat for that, so hopefully next time he'll fly to her hand even quicker in the future. Now, if he's going off to the side of the stage like that, that's probably because he's learned how to forage. Now, that's an natural behavior for a bird like this, but what he's done is he's probably found food there at some point in his past, and that's why he's going to go to that location, right? So these birds are always learning in their environment, and that's something to keep in mind, that the reinforcers are always in play while they're out here. So, found something. Yeah, what was that? I don't know. But he ate it. All right, um, can you not? <laughs> Wait, you just gave him a piece of food for untying my shoes. No, I gave him a treat for coming back, because he was walking around. So I want to see right here. See, he's right. smart. Okay, the thing is, you'll see what behaviors they're learning. They're going to start repeating certain things over and over again because they realize, hey, last time I did one thing, I got a treat, right? And I'm going to do it in... Seriously, dude. <laughs> but Ray! You <laughs> learned how to untie shoes! Why, why, why are we reinforcing this? Because, like, he might be the smartest raven in the world. Well, he I is probably very smart, but we're not going to keep on the shoes. Stay away from the shoes. He's we're not going to get you. Oh. Oh. What is what is it? Hello? It doesn't look like food. Is it a leaf? That's my microphone cord. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Are, what did he just rip a chunk of? Okay, there's a backup. No, 
please don't go. used to open up the side of a tree to nest in. So in your house, that turns into your drywall or your hand or your furniture, and they can also live over 60 years. Yeah, imagine Camptown races at 5 a.m. for 60 years. <laughs> it gets old. Oh, um, do you know what's next, though? No, I'm so mixed up. <laughs> okay, so I figured what we do is we had kind of a small bird, right? Right. So we chatted backstage. Let's bring out one of our bigger birds. Like him. Like maybe this guy coming up. Yeah. Extra large. Oh. Like, I love it. <laughs> Everyone, I'd like you to meet Boris. He's a pterodactyl. He's <laughs> not quite that big, but he is pretty large. He's a marabou stork, so one of the largest flying birds in the world. Heads up. Yeah, that's close to an 11 foot wingspan. Yeah, he's massive, and he plays a really important role out in the wild because these birds are scavengers. They eat carrion, which is dead stuff. Sounds a little gross, right? But it actually helps to clean up the mess when an animal dies in the wild and 
stop the spread of disease. Yeah, so in a way, you can kind of think of these birds as nature recyclers. And if we all recycle in our own way, the world would be a lot cleaner of a place, that's for sure. All right, Boris, you did a great job, my friend. We'll have some more treats waiting for you in the back. What do you think? See you later. Boris, the very first start. Yeah. But maybe give me a little more heads up next time you fly a dinosaur my way. Noted. Okay. Uh, neat thing is, though, we get to meet more birds. Like that guy way up there, that's a crown crane. His name's Frazier, so that makes him Frazier Crane. Got a few groans from the audience there. Well deserved. Uh, <laughs> he's never flown down to me, though, so do you mind calling him to you? Well, you've been practicing backstage, right? Well, I've given him a couple treats, but he's never actually flown down to me out here. Well, have you asked him? Well, not really. Well, why don't you give it a try? This has been a weird show. That's kind of my point. It's been a weird show and everyone's stuck around this long. Do y'all want to see Scott feed the crane? Woo! Okay, I'll give it a try. Okay, cool. You've got treats, right? I do. Okay, so Scott has some of Frazier's favorite snacks, and that's one of the first ways that we can begin to build relationships with all of the animals that we work with. We call it putting a deposit into the trust account. In the very beginning, we'll just drop off a piece of food and walk away. Ooh. Frazier, this way, buddy. Frazier! That way looks great too. Okay, um, strong start. Yeah. Can we try one more time? Calm down. Okay, so I bought that stomp rocket. It was a success. Yeah. I also got something for you, a training tool. It's behind the rock and it's gonna help you with Frazier. Okay, so Frazier is a crown crane, right? They get their name from the crown of golden feathers on their heads. <coughs> so I thought it would help Scott if he had his own crown of golden feathers. What is this? It's a hat. Well, yeah, but they don't want to see me wear a hat. Do you want to see Scott wear a hat? They don't want to see me wear a hat. It's Guy Fieri! <laughs> nice. I heard someone recommend backwards, too. Backwards, I like that. nice. Wow, now that is style. Thank you. He's going to fly down for sure. You got your treats, right? I got some treats. Okay, he is going to look over and see you with your beautiful new crown. No way. You think it was the hat? <laughs> no, DJ just bet me five dollars. I couldn't get you to wear that thing. <laughs> right. So, so the treats then? Yeah, it was the treats and the relationship building. You just needed a little confidence boost and nothing says confident like that hat. <laughs> yeah, sure. See you hey buddy, you want more treat? What do you think? Praise your crane, everyone! It was a nice look. It sure was. Okay, I know that was silly, but it does go to show how far we'll go to build the relationships that we have with all of the animals that we work with. And I think each and every one of us can take a closer look at the relationship that we all have with the world around us. Yeah, and we can do little things to help out animals across the planet. And my favorite example of that is the story of the national bird of the United States of America, the bald eagle. Everyone, this is hope. Now, Hope here was actually injured out in the wild, and because of that injury, she wouldn't be able to survive on her own out there. That's why she lives here with us. But she acts as an ambassador for her species to share a very important story. Because not long ago, bald eagles like her, they were placed on the endangered species list. And their numbers were dropping so low, so fast, it was feared people would never see these beautiful birds in the wild ever again. But something pretty amazing started to happen. People did notice, and they took action. They cleaned up waterways where bald eagles were fishing, and they stopped using a chemical pesticide called DDT, which is one of the major reasons for their decline. Yeah, and the coolest part about that is the reason we can all hear that beautiful call today is because the people, just like all of us, work together to bring them back from the brink of extinction. That's exactly right. Everyone's efforts did pay off. The numbers started to climb, and they rose so high, they were taken off the endangered species list. It's a pretty awesome conservation success story that goes to show we can all do little things around the planet to help save wildlife. Yeah, absolutely, because there's still so much work that can be done and so many animals out there who need our help. Just like this one here who just showed up. His name is Flint. He is a blue-throated macaw. All right, well, this is a really special treat because blue-throated macaws are some of the rarest species of macaws you can find in the wild today. They're only found in Bolivia, and unfortunately, there are less than 300 of them left out there. Yeah, 300 is a scary low number, but it's not all bad news. We've teamed up with an organization called the World Parent Trust, and together we're working to release blue-throated macaws into wild places. Hopefully they'll meet up with the wild population, and we can see skies filled with blue. 
Who Throwed It Because. You know what? That would be a pretty awesome sight to see, right? And the neat thing is there are so many birds out there with their own incredible stories, like this one with Cory. That is a harpy eagle, one of the largest, strongest predatory birds on the entire planet. And back here in the window, what type of bird is this? Shout it out. A toucan, yeah, his name's Bruno, so we don't talk about it. <laughs> Everyone go out in nature, explore, have your own adventures, you might find a new favorite animal. That's really well said, right? On behalf of all of us here, including our feathered friends, we want to leave you with one final wish. May your hearts take flight and your spirit soar forever. Namaste. Wonderful rest of the day exploring Disney's Animal Kingdom.